And I am coming to you from the Enchanted Cottage and Chicken Farm in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Well, I have one of my favorite authors and bloggers on today, and I'm real excited. We're going to try to do this live, and there are some technical things going on. On my end, I have four dogs in my office and three chickens in my kitchen. So it could be, you know, we might have to take a break and check things out. But here is my guest. Are you ready? It is Lisa Steele and Abigail. And Lisa, welcome. Welcome to the Chicken Show. Hi, and I am so glad to be here. Aww. Abigail's glad to be here, too. I recruited her. Oh, uh, wonderful. And I'm going to show people your book. One of the things I noticed now, we have a, a technical delay in our speaking, but we will work this out. We'll pretend we're coming from across the world instead of across America. But this is a, the book that we're going to be talking about, among other things. It is Fresh Eggs Daily. And it really resonates with me because it is raising happy, healthy chickens naturally. And everything that I love to do in my own life and with my hands is natural. And this opened up a whole new world for me. So let's get Lisa on and find out what, uh, I don't know, what came first, chickens or your love of natural living and herbs? How did that all come to play into one glorious bundle of fresh eggs <laughs> Well, uh, the herbs came first. I've I've been um, growing herbs for forever and using them in cooking. And my mom was really into natural. And I lived on a farm, and ate you know fresh foods and good foods. And when I got the chickens, it just kind of made sense that we're eating their eggs. So I really don't want to use oh Abigail um, antibiotics or anything that's not natural on them. You know, we treat our dogs naturally for ticks and fleas and all that. So it just made sense, and I started reading, and um, there wasn't really a lot out there in one place. You know, it, this book has been around forever. Um, it certainly is nothing new. You know, they, since ancient times, people have been using herbs for animals and people. But I couldn't find one place that had everything. So I started reading, researching, you know, making notes. Oh. Um, I started my blog and realized that people were really interested in this stuff and they wanted to learn as well. So that's how the blog came about. And then, um, you know, St. Lynn's Press uh, approached me about writing a book. And I just thought it was a great idea because not everybody's on Facebook, not everybody reads blogs. And so, you know, we could um, show people how happy and healthy my chickens are and, and, you know, let them know how easy it is and inexpensive it really is to incorporate all this stuff into your chicken keeping. And one thing about this book, um, Fresh Eggs Daily, it really is, you know, it has everything. It looks like it's a smaller book, but it's almost like an encyclopedia of all sorts of do-it-yourself treats and recipes and health tips and taking a chicken from a, a chick to a, a mature hen. So you pack wonderful, lots and lots of wonderful info in this. Um, one of the things that we're talking about is spring is coming. You're able to sit outside. I think one time we were going to video and you were in a snowstorm and couldn't. Um, how does spring affect your daily life? What are you doing for your herbs for your chickens uh, in spring? Well, I do, I do have a, a large herb garden, and a lot of the things come back. We're in Virginia, so I have parsley, and my lavender came back, um, my oregano, and other things die out, and I have to replant or reseed. But I did um, plant. Uh, new herbs, and in fact, I actually just picked, I don't know if you can see, yeah. uh, all from the garden. Look at Abigail. Um, the mint came back, so we've got all kinds of great things, and I use fresh herbs in the spring, summer, and into the fall, and then I dry as much as I can, and I use them dried in the winter in the nesting boxes, in the feed, um, but they do like to eat them fresh. I, I like to just go grab a handful of whatever and um, throw them into the run fresh, and you know, Abigail's been eating them since she hatched. I, I give my baby chicks chopped um, herbs, and they love them, and they develop the taste for them. So now when I give them to her, you know, she, she gobbles them right up. And tell me about Abigail. Um, what kind of a hen is she besides well-loved? Abigail, she's actually she's an olive egger. So her mom was a, uh, an Americana, a blue egg layer, and her dad was a Moran, one of the chocolate brown egg layers. So Abigail, actually, here's one of her eggs. She lays olive green eggs. Uh huh. How fun! And and she's cute. I mean, she's got the cheek puffs, and they're just a fun little breed. She's got 
Oops, she's got feathers. Sorry, Abigail. She's got feathers on her feet. Um, so they're a fun breed. I, I enjoy them, the olive eggers. She's very talkative, though. Do you want more chocolate chicken? Does she have a oh, All right, she's done. She just left the <laughs> Goodbye, Abigail. What's her favorite herb? Um, I think the girls overall, they really love parsley. Um, parsley seems to be a big favorite. Uh, that's probably what they go for first. And parsley is, is just super packed with vitamins. So I don't know if they know that, but it's a good all-round herb. And I give them a lot of basil, um, which is also a good vitamin source. And I give them oregano. Um, oregano, I don't know if you know, has, has actually been studied as a natural antibiotic. It's one of the few that they've done studies on. So I really go heavy on the oregano. Um, so my run smells like a pizzeria most of the summer because, you know, they just eat chopped oregano. Um, you know, almost daily. I mean, I just kind of randomly pick whatever needs to be snipped or, or trimmed out of the herb garden, so there's no waste ever. And I just give them... Mint is not a favorite. They don't they don't really like to eat the mint so much, but I put that in the nesting boxes. It repels mice, and it smells really good. Yeah, so then so. we've got a couple things to talk about, Lisa. We can have the nesting boxes, what you put in a nesting box and why, what you put in their food and why, and then anything else you do with the herbs for your chickens. Why don't we do those three things, starting with the nesting box? Okay, the nesting boxes, uh, your main goals with them is you, you want to keep mice and bugs out, because obviously, you know, you don't want them in your nesting boxes, and you want to create a, a calming environment. So when your chickens are laying their eggs, I can imagine it's stressful. And also when they're sitting on eggs, they're more, much more likely to sit for the whole three weeks if they're calm and, and relaxed. So I go heavy on the lavender, chamomile. Those are both very soothing, calming herbs. I like to put rose petals in because they smell good. Um, and then I do put a lot of the mint because it helps repel mice. And thyme and rosemary repel flies. So, so those are kind of the ones I go heavy on, uh, fresh if I have them, dried if I don't. And they also, they give the sitting hen, not really when she's laying an egg because she's not eating, but if she's sitting on eggs to hatch them for the three weeks, you know, she'll nibble at the herbs and it gives her something to eat, whereas she's not getting off as often to eat and drink. So I think that's really beneficial for the, the hens also when they're sitting on the eggs. So that, mm -hmm. that's the, the nesting box blend I call it. Lemon balm. I also use a lot of lemon balm. It smells really good. <laughs> And then um, what do you put in their food? So for the food, um, I tend to go dried in the food. Um, if, I, if I feed fresh in the summer, I kind of just, on the way to the coop, I'll stop at the garden and grab some things and toss them into the run. Um, like, as I said, with things that need to be trimmed or whatever. Um, but into the food, I do dry. Uh, again, just pick anything that needs to be trimmed, and I dry them on drying racks, crumble everything up, and just kind of mix it all together. And then I'll, you know, put a couple scoops into the food when I'm mixing up their food mix. So for the feed, I go for things like the oregano because it's a natural antibiotic. Sage has been studied to help prevent salmonella. Um, so that's another big one that I put in the food. I don't necessarily put the rosemary or the thyme because they're they're kind of um, spiky and, and that. Um, so I do like the basil, oregano, sage, um, dill. Dill has lots of vitamins. Any of those kind of more water-based herbs that, that really dry nicely and will crumble. I do a lot of marigolds, petals. That's what makes their egg yolks really orange. So that's fun. I mean, marigolds are nutritious also, but it also makes their, their yolks really, really orange. So, so those are probably the, the main ones that I focus on as food additives. Oh, that sounds great. And one question that comes up a lot are the, the parasites that chickens get, mites and, and uh, all the different bugs that could be on a chicken. And you use your natural healing your natural herbs to fight these rather than using a chemical spray or anything like that. And I love that because I don't like to put chemicals on my dogs or my chickens. So would you share what you exactly. put on your chickens and maybe your dogs too because most chicken people yeah. love dogs too. That's a really good point. This time of year, you know, I read on all these forums, um, people are spraying their ch chickens with Frontline. I just cringe because I won't even use Frontline on our dogs. I've read too many horror stories. It's chemicals. I don't want to apply that. So for our dogs, I actually use rose geranium spray, and it helps repel fleas and ticks. And um, we've never had any problems. I also, I, we dust our cat sometimes with DE. You know, same as you'd use with the chickens, um, the diatomaceous earth. It's natural. It kills fleas and ticks. Um, and our cat's outside all summer, all the time. Um, 
So that's the natural stuff we do with our dogs and cats. And for the chickens, same thing. Um, you can use garlic juice as a spray. If you have um, the scaly leg mites, if you see them on your chickens, or if they have any kind of mites or lice under their wings, by their vents, you can spray them with the, the garlic juice and then sprinkle them with DE also. You, you kind of like bread them. <laughs> spray them and, and, you know, bread them down. But that, that'll kill. It might take a little longer, but it's not going to hurt them. And like you, it, I feel more comfortable. And um, also, you know, with the, the herbs in the nesting boxes that help repel bugs. I mean, pretty much any aromatic herb is going to be something bugs aren't going to like. So whatever combination you toss in there, you can also put the dried herbs in their nesting box, you know, along with the dirt and the sand and the DE, throw some herbs in. Um, and it also a good point that I thought of when you asked the question for the worms, the internal worms, mm -hmm. instead of using a wormer, you know, like an ivermectin or one of those chemical wormers, um, I use nasturtium, pumpkin seeds, um, dandelion greens, carrots, they all have natural warming properties. And one of the big pushbacks I get is they haven't really been studied. You know, where's the proof? Where's the science? Where's the studies? No one's funding these studies. So there isn't a lot of actual scientific proof. But there's generations and generations of people using these things. Bottom line, they're not going to hurt. You know, chickens love nasturtium. Even our horses eat the nasturtium. Um, you know, so they're not going to hurt them. Pumpkin seeds are super nutritious. Uh, so it's worth a try. And I've never had a problem with worms or parasites or anything. I mean, this preventive stuff, if you do it on a regular basis, you can't tell me it doesn't work. You know, I'm, I'm living proof that, you know, going on seven years – and never had any kind of problems. Yeah, no, you're exactly right, Lisa. And if you think of the big pharmaceutical companies, it doesn't behoove them to study natural uh, remedies because they're more into the toxic chemical things. So, um, like you, I try the natural remedies here. Um, if, if it works for me, then I'm going to keep doing it. So, um, I like some of those suggestions because I've never tried the pumpkin seeds. So, that'll be another one. But the nasturtiums, I know, are Yeah, you can grind them up. The nasturtiums, I grind the pumpkin seeds up like in my coffee grinder and I just mix them in with their feed or in the fall, you know, after Halloween's over, I just cut the pumpkins in half and they eat the skin, the pulp, the seeds, they eat it all. And it's, it's, it's super nutritious, so it's really a win-win. What do you think a person should have in their natural medicine cabinet? Well, I do tons of preventive. I unfortunately haven't had to deal with, you know, after the fact. I mean, I certainly, you know, would take a chicken to the vet if I had to, if it came to that, you know, and I would administer antibiotics, if, you know, last, last um, resort. But, but with the preventives and doing all that, I mean, really all I keep in my first aid kit is um, uh, Sierra Sage Herbs makes a green goo, which is like an herbal salve. You can use that on cuts and bruises and scrapes and, you know, on your horses, your cats, your dogs. So we have that in the house. We have it in the barn. I, I do keep that, um, you know, whether there's a predator attack or an injury. I think that's important to have something that you can put on. Um, and I keep, you know, gauze and bed wrap and all that, that kind of stuff. But I really don't keep anything on hand um, you know, for as far as antibiotics or anything. Um, I keep molasses. I uh, it's a great detoxifier. You know, if, if you think somebody's eaten something that's toxic or is poisoned, uh, the molasses will help flush them. So I do keep molasses on hand. I keep honey. Um, you can put honey on wounds. It's it's uh, got antiseptic and antibiotic properties, and mm -hmm. obviously it's not toxic. If somebody else, you know, comes over and wants to check it out. Um, I keep saline solution, you know, for eye wash if someone's mm -hmm. got debris in their eyes. But really, I, I don't I don't think you really need all that much more. I keep cornstarch to stop bleeding. Um, you know, so you could one trip to your local grocery store and you can assemble pretty much your entire first aid kit. And I feel pretty prepared for, you know, anything that's going to happen. And you are a living example. And that's what I resonated with your book because I'm new to chickens. But of exactly how I think we should be doing it naturally with natural things from the earth. And like you said, because you do the preventive, you don't have the things that people are then curing with all the toxic chemicals. So you don't have the mites, you don't have the parasites. Correct. It's easier to prevent them than to treat them. Treating gets a little iffy, you know, and, and um, like with ourselves, you know, if, if, I, if I get sick or pretty much all winter, I take echinacea, you know, I take vitamin C, I make elderberry serum, you know, I drink a lot of lemon tea with honey, and all this stuff, it just kind of builds your immune system, so when something comes your way, 
and chickens are bombarded with you know pathogens and all this nastiness but if they're strong and healthy and have great immune systems they're just going to shake it right off and you won't even know that anything's happened which is the way it should be uh, I love it I love it you're out in a beautiful paradise just would you share a little bit about um, where you live and how many how many people are in your flock how many chickens are in your flock and well, right now, we, in fact, I'll give you a little, um, this is our little grow-out coop from Urban Coop Company. It's a starter coop, but I use it as a nursery. It could be a sick bay, whatever. Um, but it's actually in our horse pasture. So here's our pasture, and actually, you can probably see Abigail just, like, wandering around the pasture now. Yeah. Um, but we have, anyway, we have uh, we have six acres, and it's part of it's fenced in for our horses. We have two horses, a German Shepherd, a Corgi, a barn cat, ten ducks. Uh, Twelve chickens and a rooster is what we've got right now. So it's a it's a happy little family. Do your ducks and chickens um, hang out together, or do you keep them separate? No, they hang out together. We we started with ducks at the same time as chickens. You know, we went to the feed store to get the chicks, and the ducklings were there. And you know, who can resist? Um, and I knew nothing about ducklings, but I raised them together the same, and you know, they're fine. I've I've since fine tuned and learned that there are some differences with ducklings, and I do now brood them separately. Um, in fact, we have ducklings in our bathtub right now, which is always fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they live together. They do sleep in separate. The ducks. Um, they don't really want to sleep in the coop with the chicken, so the ducks do have a separate house to sleep in. But they share the run and they share feed and treats and everything. Everybody gets along. Ah, uh, that's neat. Um, you know, it, time just goes so fast. I knew it would because you were just a treasure trove of information. But I understand you've got a new opportunity coming back. You are going to be a reality TV star. So would you share a little bit about what you know? I know it's new, so you may not have all the details. Right, yeah, and I don't know that I'm going to necessarily be a star, but I will be involved in a new um, reality show called Coop Dreams. And, um, you know, I've been approached a couple times by different, um, you know, Hollywood uh, production companies, and I'm not really the reality show type of person, you know, no drama, no whatever. But this really seemed like it was going to follow a family starting out with chickens and each week bring a different um, expert, chicken keeper, whoever, who could um, contribute something to whatever stage of chicken keeping they were in. And that episode would focus on you know, this family learning something from this person they brought in. So I'm going to be in one of the episodes talking about all this natural stuff, air in July. Um, but as you said, I don't really have you know many more details at this point. But I certainly will be sharing on my Facebook page Fresh Eggs Daily, if anyone wants to come follow along with me, because I think it's going to be a fun show, and I think that hopefully it'll open the door for more reality shows, but not the Kardashian type, but the real people, you know, mm -hmm. type. Don't focus on the drama and all that, but really are, you know, good family shows with good values and and um, sort of like a docu drama type show. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited about um, that. I don't have a television, but there may be ways I can find it through different links nowadays. I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, anything, you would like, anything you would like people to know about raising chickens, if you had a closing comment for, or what's your followers like? You have a lot, a lot of followers. What, what's the favorite thing that they sort of ask you? Well, I mean, I think... I, I love the fact that so many people really, truly believe in learning to do things naturally. I mean, I, I just am so encouraged that, you know, I do have this following that really love the things that I'm sharing, and um, I think it does lead to happier, healthier chickens. So I would just encourage people to um, read a lot. You know, don't just find one source. Read as much as you can and make your own decisions about what seems to make sense for you and for your family, because that's really, there's not one way to do things. Um, you know, although I do think the way I do them because I do believe it is the right way, but maybe it's not the right way for everybody. Um, right. But but yeah, definitely do your research and decide you know what you're going to do and is going to work best for you. Yeah, and you know that is so true because because I am organic. I want my chickens to be organic, so I'm raising my chickens with organic feed, which is very pricey. I look at the differences, and yet I wouldn't you know, sh cut short on that because I don't want to eat my eggs from non-organic chickens and they share with me. So, um, you know, it's my choice. But I can see if you don't eat organic, why would you raise organic chickens, you know? So I can see we all have different baselines of what we consider helpful. 
true. And, and the thing is, I mean, not, yes, organic feed is very expensive, and, and I do use it also. But if you can't, it's not the end of the world. And that doesn't mean that you can't do other things. And, you know, okay, feed the regular feed, but then supplement with all these herbs. And, I mean, a lot of herbs are detoxifiers, and, you know, they help cleanse the blood. So so they're, they're going to be helpful even if you can't do everything. You know, that's what I always tell people. You don't have to do everything I do, but pick the things that, that seem to work for you. That's a great point. Yeah, I like that because some people may not raise chickens because of the price of organic feed when really, like you say, they can supplement and still have the beauty and the bounty on the front of a chicken, like Abigail. Exactly. Yeah, you know, Abigail, who, wherever you went. <laughs> Abigail, who's out surveying the property. So, again, if you have not looked at Fresh Eggs Daily, it, it should be in your library if you believe in happy, healthy, holistic, natural chickens. And it has all sorts of recipes of things you can make because most of our chickens are um, our loved ones. They're like pets in a sense. And we like to bring them joy. So there's a lot of ways here to bring your chickens joy, to have fun with them, to give them treats. So Lisa Steele has produced or through um, her, her company, uh, what is it, St. Saint, uh, Lynn's Press, a beautiful, beautiful book. It's just inspiring to look at. And I just opened it up, an all-natural fly spray. So with mint leaves and basil and, and wonderful things aligned, why would you want to put toxins around your, around your hands in your house? So fresh eggs daily. Lisa, it was just wonderful connecting with you, and I sure hope we can connect again. And I'm going to be looking forward to you on, what is it called, chicken poop? Um, poop dreams. Poop dreams. Poop dreams. Dream. Yes. It was okay. great chatting with you also. Yeah, thank you everybody. It's been a clucking good time. And you can find us at chickenshow.creatingcalmnetwork.com.